She has a car back and so uh, at home and now she's going to give us a talk in Skype. Uh, she apologized for the sickness and not being here, but luckily we have her on Skype so she can give us the talk on Skype. And uh, Hong Yang, can you hear us? Uh, yes. Okay, exactly. so please go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Good morning. Um, yeah, as Jin uh, introduced, and uh, as you know, Ni Nigel Gonfil, um had a, a scheduling conflict, and I would like to um, thank the organizers uh, for kindly inviting me to present our work. And um, sadly, I was injured on my way uh, to Stony Brook, so I had to cancel my trip. And I, I'm very sad to have missed uh, uh, this wonderful meeting and the discussions uh, with all of you. And uh, thanks to uh, the organizers and the, I, the, the IT staff for kindly helping me to set up this uh, video conference. And uh, let me start, uh, get started on my talk. Um, Uh, can you see my screen? Hello? Uh, can you see my screen? Uh, great, great, okay. Oh, it's uh, the first slide, right? <laughs> okay, uh, let me get started. Okay, uh, like this? Is it good? Hello? Uh, yes, okay, uh, let me start. <clears throat> um, when we talk about evolution, we need to understand it from the perspective of ecology because living systems inevitably form ecosystems. And what I'm going to talk about is an ecosystem that exhibits uh, collective feedback. And I will show uh, how this ecological feedback couples to the stability and the expansion of the communities, and uh, as well as uh, the utilization of the energy resources from the environment. Specifically, I will focus on an e uh, example of the ecosystem um, of the marine bacteria and the viruses, I will show uh, their collective dynamics can emerge from using the information flow, which enables them to efficiently utilize the energy resources and to increase their biomass. So, um, before I uh, get to the main, main, main point, uh, let me um, emphasize let me emphasize uh, the things that distinguish between uh, that distinguish the life and the non-life. So, in general, the environment provides energy input that drives the abiotic chemical processes and the living systems. Uh, for example, uh, we can imagine the environment for uh, like uh, the Earth is like a big battery that provides a potential uh, difference. And the abiotic uh, uh, processes and the living systems are like uh, wires uh, uh, subject to uh, that potential difference. Um, however, um, the difference is that the, the living systems uh, is like a, a wire that has a smaller resistance, so uh, they can utilize uh, this energy gradient more efficiently uh, for example, by doing uh, more uh, useful things like metabolic processes. So how do living systems do that? The living system can do that by finding the novel uh, pathways that can accelerate reactions through the evolutionary processes. So for example, the living systems can find a new pathway uh, through uh, the, the uh, information flow, and, and they can control this information flow um, from uh, very various evolutionary mechanisms and use the information flow to impact and, uh, the, the environment. So uh, when we talk about the information flow, uh, we usually mean the flow of genes from evolution mechanism and the 
uh, the mechanism we're mostly familiar with uh, for the gene flow is from the mutation. But that, uh, in, uh, that, uh, that information flow is in the vertical directions, like uh, from the parents to the children. Um, however, in this talk, uh, we are going to focus on different mode of information flow, which is in the horizontal directions. So this is a, a gene flow between the individuals or even between uh, the unrelated organisms. So th this mechanism is called horizontal gene transfer, and, uh, and it can be um, a, a very powerful evolutionary mechanism. So um, in this talk, a, I will show uh, the ecosystem of a tiny and pervasive marine sound bacteria called Prochlorococcus and the layer predator phage. And I will show how a, the, this uh, ecosystem can use the information flow to thrive and create new niches in the environment. So besides the information flow, the ecosystem um, has a, a other key ingredients um, that come into uh, different spatial and time scales. For example, a, the, um, a, a, there's similar thermodynamics from the energy input uh, in the environment and uh, at the environment scale. And there's also the population dynamics and the population scale, and also the metabolic processes in the molecular scale. And the information flow uh, uh, includes uh, both mutation and the horizontal gene transfer mechanism. So um, the, in the rest of the talk, uh, we're going to uh, 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 talk about the ecosystem of the marine sound bacteria and the sound of phage. And I will show uh, uh, how the collective co uh, coevolution uh, can emerge uh, by using the information uh, flow um, to let us ecosystem uh, occupy the, um, the niches. So uh, I, will, um, I will introduce the photo ingredient um, as a function of the depth of the ocean, and also the, uh, I include the population, population dynamics uh, between bacteria and viruses. Uh, I will um, and, uh, consider the information flow um, by adding the uh, mutation of horizontal gene transfer uh, between the um, bacteria and the viruses. So um, this is uh, uh, the main message of my talk. So uh, I will show that uh, through horizontal gene transfer, the ecosystem uh, can reach stability uh, uh, by the collective effects and I will uh, build up a, a minimal model for the coevolution and the collective dynamics between bacteria and the uh, phage. And our results can explain the, uh, some spatial features of this ecosystem, including the range expansion and the niche stratification of Prochlorococcus. And in the surprisingly, you, Usually, the phages are considered as a predator for bacteria, but in this special case, the predation from the sound phage to the sound bacteria actually is good for the ecosystem. The, uh, the predation, surprisingly, can stabilize uh, the evolution um, in this ecosystem, and we'll see that uh, in a minute. Um, so uh, let me quickly remind you uh, about a, the basic structure of ecosystem, which is a prey-prey um, system. And this system is composed of prey that consume the resource and the predator that eats the prey. Um, for, uh, from the empirical data, we know uh, their dynamics uh, have uh, the persistent fluctuating oscillations as a function of time uh, in their population. And there are these are some uh, conventional mathematical models for predator prey ecosystems. I um, and I, I won't go into details, uh, but the uh, the, uh, the bottom line in our talk is that we are going to use the stochastic individual level model um, because uh, this is a a, a the minimal model that uh, the. Uh, that can explain the stochastic oscillations um, um, without ad adding additional mechanism. 
So in this stochastic individual model, what we do is we consider the individuals like pred uh, predator and prey as particles that interact with each other. And uh, we consider uh, the basic e ecological interactions like the birth and death and competition and the predation. Uh, here A is the predator, B is a prey. So for example, the, this reaction uh, means uh, when one predator individual uh, meets uh, a prey individuals and there's a probability P that the, uh, the predator will eat the prey and give birth to a new pre predator individual. So by this uh, minimal individual level model, we can either uh, do a direct, uh, direct uh, um, stochastic uh, individual level simulation, for example, by Gillespie algorithm, and we'll, uh, it uh, will get the, the stochastic solutions uh, for the population of prey and predator as a function of time, uh, even though uh, in the deterministic version, a, the system, a population would converge to some constant steady state. Uh, we can also uh, do the, another calculation by using math equations, and, uh, and we can also get uh, uh, the stochastic uh, population oscillations. So we can understand this in a simple picture that um, uh, in the following way. So uh, the, 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 the solution of the populations, they are drawn to uh, the uh, um, st deterministic steady state, which is constant. But in these systems, because uh, the number of individuals uh, is uh, integers, so they are quantized. So there's intrinsic noise uh, due to a demographic stochasticity. So this intrinsic, intrinsic noise would keep uh, kicking the solution out of uh, this determined state, uh, steady state. So the solution would, would be driven away from uh, this determined solutions and then uh, be, will be drawn back to a uh, uh, steady state. So this uh, process repeat again and again, uh, these two, um, the stochastic uh, uh, oscillations. That is, um, this is uh, uh, consistent with the empirical data. And we can get this result just uh, um, uh, by uh, doing the minimum stochastic individual level model. So this is a model we are going to use. Uh, but besides the predator prey model, uh, for the bacteria and the virus systems, there are more complicated, uh, complicated uh, 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 reactions. For example, the, uh, the, the genes that encode uh, uh, the shape of a fish tail and the genes uh, that encode uh, the uh, surface receptors on a, a bacteria cell can both mutate. And when they mutate, uh, they can uh, play the co-evolutionary arms, uh, arms race game. And so the system uh, is always driven out of equilibrium. Then also, uh, those genes actually can get swapped between the uh, bacteria and the viruses. So, um, so uh, there's also horizontal gene transfer uh, in, the, in, in these microbe ecosystems. So the main question we want to ask here is how do those complicated interactions between bacteria and viruses will influence the evolution and dynamics and the stability of the communities? And, um, and, and how a, this uh, will um, influence the important ecological properties like diversity and the size of pan genome. So uh, I, next, uh, we're going to show the example I, of uh, the spatial sound of bacteria called Prochorococcus and the layer phage. And this uh, sound of bacteria is very spatial. Prochorococcus is uh, the, uh, the most abundant photosynthesis organism on the Earth. And it has very tiny and highly streamlined genome. Uh, for comparison, E. coli has roughly like four times larger genome size uh, than Prochorococcus, and uh, it has no immune system against bacteria uh, against viral attack. So, um, and uh, hypothetically, they can uh, um, resist a phage attack by uh, by uh, by getting the uh, new genes uh, through the horizontal gene transfer. Um, 
And also Perugococcus has a very huge pan genome and is roughly four times larger than the human genome. So uh, we can imagine that uh, when we compare two individual cells of Perugococcus, they roughly ha uh, have the half genomes uh, same and then the other half would be uh, very different. And another interesting special features for Perugococcus is that, that uh, they uh, show the niche certification of two equal types. Um, what I mean is that uh, uh, there are two main phenotypes for Perugococcus, and they, they uh, uh, like in these figures, they, um, they, 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 um, they have a different distribution as function of the depth of uh, uh, the ocean, and one is a low light adaptive Perugococcus which uh, will utilize uh, the, um, the, the uh, lower intensity of light and the, uh, the high, um, the, 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 uh, the, 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 uh, the higher frequency of light. And uh, in the highlight adapted uh, Procacacus um, was found to evolve after the low light adapted Procacacus and they will use uh, uh, the, the higher intensity of light and the, um, the small frequency of light. So another uh, very special and uh, surprising fact about uh, this ecosystem is that the, the phages for Procococcus, called cyanophage, they, uh, they also carry photosynthesis genes. Why is this surprising? is that uh, the phages ha also have very small genome size and then they don't do photosynthesis. So why do they uh, 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 want to like bother to carry those photosynthesis genes? So it turns out uh, from the lab uh, experiments, the phages that uh, uh, carry photosynthesis genes would have uh, effectively, effectively higher birth size during the lysis so, which means that the phage with photosynthesis genes can help the host uh, to uh, to do a more efficient metabolic uh, uh, process and maintain their host uh, to live longer. Therefore, the, the phage can also get benefit by uh, carrying the photosynthesis genes. So, I, uh, one more interesting uh, in fact in this ecosystem is that the low photosynthesis genes uh, were horizontally transferred uh, from bacteria to virus and from virus to bacteria again. So this is show, uh, show, um, this is study by um, Penn and Chisholm's group in MIT uh, published uh, about 10 years ago. So this is a their study of biology of one type of photosynthesis genes and then uh, from this uh, from under the trees, we can see um, that uh, this viral uh, photosynthesis genes in, uh, in, in, in the phages appear in a random own order uh, in the evolutionary trajectory. So uh, this means uh, these photosynthesis genes were horizontally tra transferred uh, between uh, the bacteria and the viruses at least four times. So, uh, so based on this study, um, they had uh, the hypothesis that the the, the phage uh, can I uh, can undergo a period of diversification and uh, behave like a genetic reservoir for bacteria, and the bacteria phage interactions will create a global reservoir of photosynthesis genes that benefit both bacteria and viruses. So our goal uh, in this work is to build up uh, a minimal stochastic uh, statistical models uh, for cyanobacteria and cyanophages and to explain and uh, how a collective uh, mutual um, beneficial state can emerge from the competition between bacteria and the viruses. So, um, how do we put a whole range of in our model is to consider uh, the process called a uh, generalized transduction. So how it works is that a, um, first a, a, a viral individual carries some viral genes uh, that can infect some bacteria cell 
and bacterial uh, uh, genes is in um, green and the virus is uh, in red. So the, the vi uh, virus would hijack the bacteria's machinery and make the bacteria to produce many uh, baby phages. But with some uh, small probability, some new baby phages can accidentally uh, uh, take uh, uh, bacteria's genes like, like this one in green. So because this uh, baby virus uh, doesn't have a, the, the normal uh, uh, viral genes, so they cannot do the normal uh, viral functions, uh, that means uh, they uh, kind of behave like a zombie. So this zombie phage would float around and find a, a, a new bacteria cells and infect this uh, bacteria. But because it's a zombie, so when it injects uh, the genes into uh, these new cells, the phage would be, wouldn't be able to kill the bacteria cell. On the other hand, this cell can survive and obtains the, the, the bacteria genes from the previous bacteria. So this uh, uh, picture um, explains that uh, uh, the bacteria can, um, a, can, can benefit the whole community by sacrificing a, some, a small amount of individuals in order to get the new genes through, uh, uh, through being killed by phages. So we're going to include uh, uh, this uh, uh, mechanism of uh, gen uh, horizontal gene transfer. And this is uh, uh, the, the, the whole story of our model. So for simplicity, I, what I'm showing here, uh, the blue and, and the, the orange circles are the gene pools for bacteria and for viruses. And, a, and here the plus and minus signs uh, stand for the genes that can do um, metabolism uh, uh, more efficiently or le less efficiently. So first, uh, through the horizontal gene transfer, the virus can obtain uh, those genes from bacteria. And uh, one key point is uh, that uh, the, vir uh, the virus has high mutation rate. Um, so therefore, uh, they can use these genes and to generate uh, uh, like other uh, new different genes. So these new genes will be uh, horizontally transferred to, uh, back to bacteria. And another key point is the bacteria has slow mutation rate and the bacteria uh, do streamlining to keep their genome size small. So uh, this means that the bacteria that uh, uh, filled out uh, the bad genes and keep the good genes can survive. Uh, once those bacteria survive and horizontally transfer uh, those good genes to big, uh, viruses, the viruses can use these uh, uh, good genes to generate uh, uh, the better genes and transfer back to bacteria again. So this process um, repeat again and again, and the whole ecosystem can evolve uh, better and better. So um, uh, uh, next, I'm going to show a sequence of stochastic models uh, by uh, considering different um, uh, different interactions uh, of evolutionary mechanism, and I will show uh, uh, how uh, the uh, different mechanism. Uh, like uh, the coevolution and horizontal gene transfer uh, can help us to understand the, uh, the, uh, the collective coevolution of cyanobacteria and cyanophage. So the first model uh, is a, a very simple one. So here uh, the B stands for bacteria and V stands for virus. So here we made a assumption that uh, uh, both bacteria and the viruses uh, carry one type of gene, and uh, 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 we represent this gene by some uh, some number, uh, which is uh, uh, um, stands, uh, which is represented as the the subindex i, and, and subindex j here. So, and we consider basic uh, equality interactions. Uh, uh, this one is the birth process of bacteria. So this bacteria individual carrying some gene value I 
would they uh, have some probability to give their birth to another bacteria in the visual? So in this first model, these genes uh, where we are focusing on is the gene uh, that control the, the uh, viral infection. So I, for example, so uh, in these predation processes, if this bacteria carry gene values I, and means the viral or uh, the virus uh, individual uh, that carries a gene value J, and if J uh, is larger than I, then and then the the predation can occur with some probability P, and if this predation successfully uh, successfully occur, then the bacteria would be killed and the virus can generate a bunch of new baby viruses with a size uh, of N, which is called ph uh, phage burst size. And usually I, I, the, the, the phage burst size is about um, a 20 to 100. So this means that, uh, that uh, is, uh, the, the phage inf uh, infection is uh, very violent um, because um, we can imagine uh, the baby phages would increase uh, uh, very rapidly and the population would quickly overwhelm the bacteria. So uh, we tested in, uh, uh, quickly in our simulations. So here I'm showing the average, uh, the uh, these predation genes for uh, as a function of time, and the blue is for bacteria and red is for virus. And, and uh, on the right hand side, I'm showing the simulation results of the population of uh, bacteria and the viruses. And we can show uh, the red is a, uh, we can see the red uh, population is for virus, which uh, increase uh, rapidly. And uh, um, at some point, the, the, the viral population would overwhelm the bacteria population and drive bacteria to extinction. So this means uh, because of a large uh, phage burst size, the system is unstable. But in reality, I, those I predation genes can mutate. So I, for example, I, when bacteria I produce new bacteria cells, there is some probability that at least the new daughter bacteria can carry a, 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 a different gene from uh, uh, the mother's gene. And also for viruses, uh, for viral production, when the, uh, this viral cell uh, 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 infect the bacteria, unless there, are, there is a, um, a mutation uh, probability that the new baby viruses can carry some uh, genes different from the mother phage. So, and so if we put this evolutionary mechanism in our uh, simulations, uh, we found that uh, the average genes um, uh, for the bacteria and the virus says as a function of time, only the uh, only the, the individuals uh, that can evolve to have better and better gene values would survive in the system. So the main genes for bacteria and the viruses they co-evolve together shows the uh, co-evolutionary arms race. And on the right hand side, it shows uh, the populations for bacteria in blue and the viruses in red. They can manage to sustain uh, with uh, to coexist together. However, there's another problem in this simple model, which is in reality the viral mutation rate is much higher than bacteria mutation rate. So, which means I uh, the the. Uh, the, the virus uh, viruses can mutate uh, uh, faster, and the, their mean gene values can uh, get better uh, in, in, in a much faster speed. So, uh, in and in the end, the the viral uh, population I uh, can and uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the the viral attack would still be very violent, and the viral population. Uh, still overwhelm the bacteria population. So the system is still unstable. Um, however, life can uh, find its own solution. So if we consider horizontal gene transfer in terms of generalized transduction, 
uh, we uh, we put in the horizontal transfer from bacteria uh, to virus and from virus to bacteria, like we, we um, introduced uh, uh, in the previous slide. So now, even though the bacteria uh, have, uh, have a slower mutation rate, it can constantly uh, get a, the new gene supply from the, the viral uh, from the viruses uh, by getting infected. So uh, in our simulation, we turn on the whole horizontal gene transfer and I found that the average genes um, a, um, of bacteria and the viruses um, co-evolve together and their population can sustain uh, um, to coexist together and the system becomes stable again. So next we are I, I, we are going to focus on this um, the case we're interested in, which is uh, cyanobacteria and cyanophages. So now we consider the, um, the ecosystem with bacteria and the viruses, and the bacteria and the viruses uh, now carry a different type of genes, and that gene controls the, the efficiency of photosynthesis. So which means uh, the, the bacteria BI here carry some gene values I, and uh, the, uh, the birth rate of this type of bacteria is a function of the values of I. And for viruses, because of viruses uh, that carry photosynthesis genes can, uh, um, can effectively have a, a, a larger birth size. So we said that the, the, the viral birth size uh, is a function of these photosynthesis genes that are carried by uh, the, 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 the viral individuals. So, um, so now I, I, I know, I, in our models, we also um, consider the realistic case where the viral mutation rate is higher than the bacterial mutation rate so in this uh, case, um, um, in our simulation, uh, the, that, uh, this left figure shows the mean photosynthesis gene values as a function of time. And because the viral mutation rate is higher, so a, the virus can keep uh, mutating and uh, obtain a larger and larger birth size uh, by getting a better and a better photosynthesis genes. So in the end, that means the, the viral population would quickly uh, uh, grow and uh, overwhelm the bacteria population and drive the uh, system uh, into extinction. So again, the uh, uh, life sorted out its own solution by doing holodermal gene transfer. So we consider the holodermal gene transfer of these uh, photosynthesis genes between bacteria and the viruses. And again, we see that uh, uh, because of a horizontal gene transfer, the bacteria can uh, keep getting a better and a better photosynthesis genes uh, from viruses, and the viruses uh, uh, can, um, as, as, and, and, and the viral population and the bacterial population, they can manage to sustain to coexist again. So the system becomes stable um, due to the horizontal gene transfer. So a um, so from the previous example, we can uh, see the importance of uh, the horizontal gene transfer in the collective uh, coevolution. However, uh, there's another key point in real systems. So for example, uh, for a well-adapted species, most mutations are neutral or deleterious. So which means a, the, a, when the gene mutates, they usually uh, become worse, and uh, when some genes become worse, the population would become smaller. And once the population becomes smaller, the effect of this uh, a deleterious mutation would become larger, uh, and the demographic fluctuations uh, is also, uh, are also uh, become more important, and therefore the population would shrink and eventually uh, the system would go to extinction. And this phenomenon uh, is also, uh, is usually uh, described as most redshift and or mutational uh, meltdown. So we think this, uh, this uh, feature is important in this, in the ecosystem of cyanobacteria and cyanophage, 
because I want to send a bacteria evolve and do a daily range expansion at the population front, the demographic fluctuations are very large, and this deleterious mutation uh, effect will be very strong. So we're going to consider this effect in our model by putting the mutation which is biased, and, uh, and the, the mean mutation value would not be zero, uh, instead it would be some negative values which means uh, when they mutate, they tend to mutate uh, onto a, uh, um, uh, uh, a worse value. So this is what we found in our simulations. So uh, I'm showing here is the photosynthesis genes for bacteria and for viruses function time uh, under the deleterious mutations. Because uh, viral mutation rate is higher so quickly the deleterious mutation would drive a, the viral uh, genes to uh, to be uh, to be worse and worse, and uh, the effect is that uh, the population of virus was sharing quickly, and the system would uh, uh, rapidly collapse. And how, um, however, if we turn on the horizontal gene transfer of the photosynthesis genes, the bacteria now can save the viruses. Because the bacteria has a slower mutation rate, so it will uh, uh, it, it will keep the, the beta genes in the communities. So here in our simulations, we plot the, the mean photosynthesis genes of bacteria and the virus as a function of time, and the bacteria can save uh, the, the beta genes for viruses and transfer to viruses, and their population uh, can sustain to coexist. So here I'm plotting the distribution of the photosynthesis genes for bacteria and for viruses. And the black uh, lines here stand for the genes that transfer from virus to bacteria, and these black lines are genes uh, transferred from bacteria to viruses. And we can see those transferred genes in black play important roles because they keep uh, only the good genes uh, 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 with large values are transferred and, uh, and, and save the, the, the population. So here, um, so, um, so yeah, I'm, I, from our simulation, we can map out the phase diagram to see the effect of horizontal gene transfer. So what I'm plotting here is, um, is there, uh, the order, me, order parameter we defined in our systems, which is the ratio of uh, uh, viral individuals that carry uh, good genes. And we found that if the horizontal gene transfer normalized by a mutation rate, if this uh, a, a rate is too small, uh, like, like in this region, then the horizontal gene transfer is not strong enough to supply a good enough genes to uh, beat the uh, deleterious mutations, and therefore the a, uh, the, the system uh, is is still unstable, and in the end we don't have uh, a, 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 a individuals with good genes left in the system. If we have intermediate, uh, some finite horizontal gene transfer rate, then the horizontal gene transfer uh, can for the collective uh, states in these systems, and that, that can save uh, both bacteria and the virus from the deleterious mutations. However, if the hydrogen transfer uh, rate is too high, it is not good as well. That, that is because uh, in reality, there is upper limit for the birth rate and for uh, birth size of phages. And because we don't, we cannot have infinitely high uh, birth rate and an infinitely, infinitely large birth size. So therefore, when a horizontal transfer rate is too high, the system would quickly reach uh, their upbound limit, and therefore the further horizontal gene transfer would just transfer the genes that uh, would have a negative effect to the ecosystem. So therefore, this system would still be unstable and uh, would quickly collapse uh, due to the deleterious mutation. So this was our, our prediction from the, um, our stochastic models. 
So uh, here I'd like to quickly show why this is a truly collective state. So from our uh, simulations, uh, we felt uh, we need to consider the both directions of the horizontal gene transfer. We need to consider horizontal gene transfer from bacteria to virus and also from virus to bacteria. So when, uh, uh, in our simulations, um, uh, under horizontal gene transfer, the bacteria and the virus can coexist together. But if we suddenly turn off uh, uh, um, uh, one of the horizontal gene transfer, the system would quickly collapse. So this is a, an example showing a, the, the system form a collective state due to the ecological feedback between a bacteria and the viruses. So uh, in our final model, we consider the space. Um, a, a, so what, what we do is that uh, uh, we build up a, a two-dimensional system and uh, like this, and the vertical axis um, uh, stands for the depth of the ocean. And we put in a, the, a, the photo uh, gradient as a function of the depth of, depth of the ocean. And this is what we introduced uh, at the beginning, that the Prococcus um, uh, evolved into two different ecotypes as a function of the depth of the ocean. So um, in our simulations, we um, we uh, started uh, from a uh, from considering a the low lag adapted adapted uh, um, prochorococcus and the viruses. So here the yellow uh, dots uh, are the individuals of uh, low light adaptive uh, bacteria, and the red ones are viruses, and the, the blue ones are the high light adaptive uh, bacteria that evolved later. But at the beginning, we only considered the low light adapted bacteria and the viruses that uh, uh, lead, uh, that uh, uh, survive uh, at the bottom of the systems. So um, in, in our models, the growth rate of bacteria is a monotonic function of the light intensity. And, and the death rate um, is uh, um, is uh, the death rate increase when uh, when the uh, the depth of ocean uh, decrease because the cells near the surface of the ocean would get burned by, by the sunlight. So that means the low light adapted bacteria that uh, get adapted uh, to the environment at the bottom of the system have to get a different type of genes. That that genes can give them the higher growth rate, uh, so they can compensate the higher death rate near the surface in order to migrate to a new habitat near uh, the the ocean uh, surface. So uh, we uh, so we run our simulation uh, from the bottom of the system uh, and include uh, the low light bacteria and the viruses and to see how the horizontal gene transfer can help the system to evolve uh, to different ecotypes. So this is our animation of a simulation. So first, uh, the yellow is low light adapted bacteria, and red is the viruses. So viruses can uh, contribute uh, new gene values to the uh, low light adapted bacteria, and eventually, I, the bacteria uh, get the new genes and evolve into high light adapted bacteria, then and I, um, and it, then and end up uh, with uh, the the distribution of two different ecotypes. Okay. So uh, this is a quick recap. So uh, from our uh, stochastic models, we show that the I, the collective uh, coevolution uh, behavior uh, in the sun of bacteria and the sun of phage where uh, even though the bacteria have a slower mutation rate compared to uh, uh, their predator phage, they can still get benefit through horizontal gene transfer from a phage uh, attack, uh, even, uh, even though they have to sacrifice few individuals due to infection. On the other hand, the phage have a faster mutation rate uh, 
that they will suffer from the deleterious mutations I, um, I, of Mueller's, Mueller's rhetoric. But through our drone gene transfer, they can get a benefit from bacteria because bacteria can uh, help them to field out uh, the bad genes and, the, uh, and save the good genes in the community. So therefore, the fish can, uh, can still uh, get, uh, get uh, uh, the evolving uh, uh, better photosynthesis genes. So um, uh, through this collective uh, uh, feedback, the this, uh, whole ecosystem can create a huge pan genome and leading to the range expansion uh, like I showed in, in the animation and the, the niche stratification of the different ecotypes. So uh, this is a, a slide quickly uh, recap the, the special features for Prococcus. So uh, we mentioned that Prococcus has, uh, has high, highly streamlined genomes, so we can use our uh, models to explain uh, that because I uh, uh, they have very small genome size, so they have limited metabolic redundancy. So, uh, in order to prove, they have uh, 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 they they need to have different uh, 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 approach. So, which is uh, the horizontal gene transfer, and the the uh, this prokaryotes has no uh, um, in immune uh, mechanism to uh, uh, de to to do defense. Uh, that is because they need the viral uh, uh, infection to uh, to get their beta genes um, from horizontal gene transfer, and our model can also explain the huge pan genome um, in the prokaryotes uh, due to the uh, horizontal gene transfer, and we can also explain the special feature of niche stratification of two equal types. And we also explain that why the cyanobacteria would bother to carry photosynthesis genes even though they cannot do photosynthesis by themselves. So this is uh, my take home message. So we have given an example that shows how an ecosystem can evolve to occupy niches where it can utilize the energy resources provided by the photo gradient uh, from the environment. And this happens due to the information flow mediated by horizontal gene transfer. Mm. Okay, so uh, with that, I'd like to thank my collaborator Nigel and the uh, the, the people uh, who share the discussions. And I'm very happy to take any questions. Thank you. This is a, 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 a weird similarity to the very old question of uh, sex ratios in different uh, organisms. I wonder if you could sort of comment on that, if we sort of think of the males as being the viruses and the females as being the bacteria. <laughs> Obviously, uh, there are some differences. <laughs> Um, and let me try to understand uh, the question. The question is that uh, can we uh, consider um, can we um, consider the uh, the questions of the existence of uh, two different sexes as as a similar uh, mechanism like uh, in sound of bacteria and sound of fish? Uh, Uh, horizontal gene transfer uh, from between male and females. Uh, I think it's a very interesting idea, but uh, honestly, I I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. So yeah, so it's it's clear to me how this high mutation rate of these viruses can make them prone to this uh, mutational collapse, this Miller's ratio. Uh, and if I understand you correctly, it's that the bacteria provide a source on a longer time scale that then uh, beneficial genes that then protects them against this mutational residue. But what I don't quite understand is 
how this sort of slow injection of good beneficial genes can really protect them against this uh, Müller's wretched, because that seems, right? I mean, so you, you have this high mutation rate, and can that then combat the slow injection sufficiently strongly? Okay. Um, the question is that uh, the how uh, how does the slow mutation rate of bacteria can help uh, viruses uh, uh, to uh, avoid uh, the molus fracture? So our uh, our uh, our idea is that uh, um, I, it's not only because of a slow bacteria mutation rate, but also bacteria uh, do streamlining. So they only keep uh, the, the small uh, small genome size. For example, the Proteococcus has very tiny uh, uh, genome size. So therefore, the um, the only the uh, some bacteria cells that uh, that carry the the beneficial genes uh, can survive, because like the the cells that carry the um, the deleterious genes would uh, just uh, um, uh, get wiped out. And, and, and therefore, uh, when those uh, cells, bacteria cells that survive and carry uh, beneficial genes, they can transfer those genes through hydrogen gene transfer to bacteria, uh, sorry, to viruses. So now the viruses, um, I, I, the, vi the, 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 the viral individuals that uh, uh, get the, the, the beneficial genes from the bacteria, then they, they can uh, they 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 um they they can effectively have a higher birth size. So therefore, even though um uh, some of them might quickly mutate to have a worse genes, but a, 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 like a, um a, some fraction of viruses that happen to get the beneficial genes from a bacteria can survive like uh, for uh, for for some time. So therefore, uh, by this repeated uh, horizontal gene transfer, then uh, the system can um, maintain some uh, uh, finite populations of bacteria and viruses that carry uh, beneficial genes. Uh, thank you. Are there any other questions? Oh, let's send Komiya again. Thank you very much. Uh,